Good morning, AP Chem. This is section four of chapter five, and it is going to cover the mechanics of gas stoichiometry. The stoichiometry you are familiar with, with the little twist for gases. So what we're going to do is a couple of different types of problems. We are going to do standard temperature and pressure problems versus non-standard temperature and pressure problems. And just a little sidebar here, we are going to figure out the volume of an ideal gas, one mole at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So of course, one set of conditions, and we are going to use Pivnert. And we are going to rearrange Pivnert for volume. And we are going to fill our numbers in. And it says one mole, 0 0.08206, and that's liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So when you use Pivnert, please remember you have very specific units for volume and pressure. 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, 273.2 Kelvin. And the pressure at given is 1.00 atmosphere. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator. And what you should get is a volume of 22.4 liters. This is actually used as a conversion factor for volumes of gases. Molar gas volume. The molar volume of an ideal gas at STP is 22.4 liters. STP is standard temperature and standard pressure. We're going to do an example. At standard temperature and pressure, a sample of nitrogen gas has a volume of 1.75 liters. How many moles is that? We could use Pivnert if you like, so I could show you both ways if you like. N would be equal to PV over RT or 1.75 liters and there are 22.4 liters for every one mole and this guy gives me an answer of 0 0.0781 moles of nitrogen gas which of course would be equivalent to 2.19 grams of nitrogen gas. Now if we used Pivnert, of course you'd be plugging in the one atmosphere, uh, the 1.75 liters, our good buddy R, and 273 Kelvin. And you would be getting the same answer. So either or. Now, keep in mind, however, this nice shortcut version here on the right, this ratio, an ideal gas is 22.4 liters. One mole of an ideal gas is 22.4 liters. That's only going to work at STP and only STP. That's only zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. The minute one of those variables are changed, you cannot use that ratio. All right, so an example of an ideal gas not at STP. First thing you always have to do before you even proceed is to make sure 
that your equation is balanced and this one is not. So we have to balance it first and we're going to figure out what volume of oxygen gas is needed to react with 5 grams of the sugar, which isn't a gas and what volume of each product is produced under the same conditions. So this is a lengthy example, multi-tiered, multi-step problem, and we're going to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have to rewrite it, and I have to balance it, because you can't do stoichiometry unless it's balanced correctly. They tell me I have 5 grams of the glucose, and I'm just going to identify it shortcut version. Because I'm doing stoichiometry, I want to keep really good track of everything I'm doing. Change it from mass to moles. change it from moles of the sugar to moles of the oxygen gas. So my last ratio here what this states is 5 grams of sugar will require 0.167 moles of oxygen to be used completely to react. Now, in the earlier chapters, we would convert this to mass of oxygen and we would be done with it. They, our answer would be in grams. With the gas law chapter, they want volume, not mass. There's only one way to get the volume of any gas, and that is with Pivner. So we are going to use Pivner to figure out the volume of the oxygen gas. And that's going to be Pivner rearranged. I just figured out the N. Our R is the same point 0.08206 liter atmosphere moles Kelvin. The temperature is given in the problem. Temperature is 28 degrees Celsius. 28 degrees Celsius plus the 273 is going to be 301 Kelvin. All of it over the pressure that's also given in the problem as 0.976 atmospheres. Put it into your calculator, and what you find is in order for the glucose to react completely with the oxygen gas or to burn completely, you would need 4.23 liters of the oxygen gas. Now, the last half of the problem. Since the Gases are all under the same conditions. Avogadro's law takes over, and you can just use the ratios to figure out the rest. So in other words, if you're using 4.23 liters of oxygen gas, and oxygen and oxygen to carbon dioxide is a one to one ratio you are actually going to produce 4.23 liters of the carbon dioxide and you are going to produce 4.23 liters of the water under the same conditions as long as all three gases are under the same conditions you can use the mole to mole ratio for volume. Here's a tougher one. 
a sample of methane gas having a volume of 2.80 liters at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.65 atmospheres mixed with a sample of oxygen gas having a volume of 35.0 liters at 31 degrees Celsius and 125 atmosphere. Here's what I want you to realize. First, not STP. So this little ratio will not apply. Secondly, the gases are under different conditions. So this problem is going to be a little difficult, a little more multi-step than the other two. But as long as you remember the only way to obtain the moles of a gas from the volume is pivnert, and the only way to get the volume of a gas is through pivnert. The stoichiometry is kind of the same. The third thing you are going to have to realize is that they're giving you the quantity of the methane and the oxygen gas. This is a limiting excess problem. They are giving you the quantity of both reactants. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write myself a balanced chemical equation gaseous methane burns an oxygen to produce carbon dioxide gas and gaseous water. All right, now my first chore is to figure out the number of moles of methane and the number of moles of oxygen gas. You cannot do stoichiometry in mass, volume, pressure, you can only do stoichiometry in a mole to mole. I must convert my volume and pressure of each gas to moles of each gas using Pivner. And again, each gas is at different conditions. And thankfully, those conditions are given in the right units, with the exception of temperature. Don't forget, R is still 0.08206. What I'm starting with, and I haven't even done the stoic yet, keep that in mind. What I'm starting with is this many moles of reactant number two and this many moles with reactant number one. So now I do the stoichiometry and I'm running out of room a little bit, so I'm going to shortcut it and just do the ratio according to my balanced chemical equation for every one mole of the CH4 I will produce one mole of the carbon dioxide. It's a one to one ratio. According to the balanced chemical equation for every two moles of oxygen I will produce one mole of carbon dioxide. Compare the two numbers. This is my least amount. So the methane is my limiting reactant, and my oxygen is my excess. Okay. So the next the question asks calculate the volume of carbon dioxide. Ooh, I don't have to worry about the excess one at all. The volume of carbon dioxide produced 
will be pivnered again. If it was the old fashioned stoichiometry, we would just take 0.189 moles and multiply it by molar mass. But this is the gas law chapter, and the only way to get the volume of a gas is through pivnert. So volume of the carbon dioxide, and the conditions are given. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide formed at a pressure and temperature, so they give me those. I calculated the N through stoichiometry. R is still the same. The temperature is 398. That's given in the problem. And 2.50 atmosphere. And it comes out to be 2.45 liters is my answer. Bottom line, gas stoichiometry Instead of going from mass to moles, you'll be going from volume to moles. Instead of going to mass of a product, you'll be going to volume of a product. You can still do limiting excess. If it's under STP, it's a real simple 22.4 is equal to 1 mole. If it's not STP, it gets a little more convoluted. There you go. Remember, at STP and only STP. One mole of any gas has a volume of 22.4 liters. And what is STP? Zero degrees Celsius, one atmosphere. And remember, if all the gases are at the exact same conditions, then you're doing Avogadro's law, and you can just use the ratios from the balanced chemical equation. But if the gases are at different conditions, you're doing Pivnert coming and going. Pivnert's just flying all over the place. That's the end of section four, gas stoichiometry.